Welcome back to another episode of Moon Phases and Essential Oils. I'm Laurie Barnes, and I'm a psychotherapist, an astrologer, a moon lover, and an essential oil user. <laughs> I love my essential oils. So today we're going to talk about the full moon in Aries that's coming up this weekend, and we'll talk about how to best use the energy and some essential oils that will help you really ground yourself and embrace the energy of this upcoming full moon. Let's start with the details. The full moon culminates on Sunday, October the 9th, and depending on where you live, it'll be a different time. So if you're in the United States, it'll be around 1.55 in the afternoon. And if you're on the East Coast of the US, it'll be around 4.55 p.m. in the afternoon. And then if you're here in Rome, Italy, where I am, it'll be in the uh, late evening at 10.31 p.m. That way you know when the exact time of the full moon takes place. When it's a full moon, I believe that it is not as important if you wait until after the phase begins to do any kind of ritual or any of the activities that you choose to do for the full moon. Whereas when it's a new moon phase, it is important to wait until after the new moon phase has begun because it's the beginning of a whole cycle. The full moon is the middle of the cycle, so it's peaking. You can think about if you're going over a mountain, when you get to the very, very top, when you're no longer climbing and you're just in that center point getting ready to go back down, that's like the full moon. It's a culmination of the cycle. The moon cycle is about 29 and a half days because it takes that long for the moon to go through the whole zodiac and come back around and meet the sun again. And that's a new moon. So we are going into a full moon, which is halfway through the cycle, and it's a culmination. And that's when the moon is really bright in the sky, and it looks like a full moon for a few days. There is a particular time when it's considered the, the most light that this, the moon is going to reflect, and then it enters the full moon phase, and it goes into the second half of a, of a full lunar cycle. So that's what's happening this weekend. We're going into a full moon, an Aries full moon. And the moon should look very bright for you in the sky and growing over the next few days as we get to the culmination point this weekend. Okay, so let's talk first about Aries and Libra. The full moon is in Aries. The sun is in Libra. So when we have a full moon, it's always the same two pairs of signs. The, the two signs are Libra and Aries. And if you watch the new moon video that came out two weeks ago, the the new moon was in Libra because the sun and the moon met in the same sign. And the moon moves much faster than the sun and it has gone halfway around the zodiac and now it's on the opposite side. So the moon is in Aries and the sun is in Libra. And that highlights the Libra-Aries axis, which is about self-focus and other focus and how you find the balance between the two. Aries is always about yourself. It's the first sign of the zodiac. It's a very youthful sign. It's charismatic. It loves a challenge. It's very outgoing. It loves the physical challenges as well. So any kind of challenge, but especially a physical challenge. So you see uh, maybe the military is a like an Aryan kind of vibe or martial arts. Uh, and especially martial arts, because it has the philosophical side. So it's not just going out and being physically able to fight, but it's having the warrior attitude of knowing the right time to use physical force and the right time to not use physical force, you can say. Aries is a very youthful sign, so it is about learning the difference between those two. It's a very creative sign. It's a fire sign. I don't know if I said that yet. It's a fire sign. It's fiery. That's why my two moons are red. And I'm wearing uh, my, my red ring. And this is a type of jasper that I'm wearing. And it's mixed with some gray tints. And I'm wearing gray because Aries is a Mars sign. And Mars is very much about metal and uh, the warrior. So that's the type of energy that Aries brings. And Libra is about the other. It's about how do we relate with others and how, how do we find our place in relationship with others? The axis that we're talking about, the Libra Aries axis, is about the me and you. And it's about self-focused and other-focused and how you balance that. 
So the extreme ends, we did talk about that two weeks ago, and we're going to talk about it again today because before it was the, the Libra new moon, and now it's the Aries full moon. The sun is still in Libra, and so the full moon is shining the light on this axis and asking us to evaluate how we find balance between what we do with others or focus on others and what we are doing for ourselves. Now, because it's in Aries, there is there is that focus to, or ask for us to really take the time for ourselves to make sure that we're doing our own self-care and that we're taking care of our well-being because we cannot take care of others or do our part in partnership if we haven't taken care of ourselves first. So that's definitely a theme of this upcoming full moon. As with every moon phase, there's the consideration of what else is going on in the sky. And so this is what's going to flavor this particular full moon. And especially from year to year, because we'll have an Aries full moon every year. So what makes this year's Aries full moon unique? So there's a few things going on. First of all, you probably already know that Mercury has gone direct. The last time we talked, Mercury was still retrograde and it has finished its cycle. On October 2nd, it changed from retrograde to direct motion. And even though it's uh, not actually moving backwards in the sky, it's the appearance of it moving backwards because of the motion of Earth, the way the Earth is moving around. And during those time periods, it, we reflect back. It's a good time to slow down and to focus on finishing up projects or going back to projects that maybe had to be pushed aside for a while. It's time to look back, to make progress on those. And it's a good time to review anything that you have been doing and update it. Find uh, any errors that you might have made or um, just uh, re-looking at everything before moving forward again, which is where we are now. So right now, we're in that time period where it's time to look forward again. There's a shadow period. It's called a post-retrograde shadow period. And that's the time between when Mercury goes direct and when it reaches the point where it went retrograde in the first place. And that's going to be on October 17th. On October 17th, we will be finished with the entire Mercury retrograde cycle and completely forward focused. This time period between when it went direct on October 2nd until the 17th, things are starting to move forward again. And you can certainly find that this is a auspicious time to start moving forward again. So maybe you took the opportunity during Mercury retrograde to go and look back over a project, a few projects, maybe evaluate what you have done between this past Mercury retrograde and the one before, and just relook at everything with a, a new eye and make some revisions, some realignments, some refinements. And even maybe you made a list of those things. Now is the time to start implementing those things. Now is the time to stop looking backwards and to start looking forward and to start putting into place whatever you identified is something that needed to be updated. And this can relate to any part of your life. And it really depends on your chart where that energy was active. So for some, it can be relationships, for some, it can be work, for some, it could be family or home or children or friends or your network. So just kind of think about where you were asked to look back. And when I say that, it's really the universe putting things in your path that made you have to take pause, or maybe you were delayed, or maybe uh, you didn't go seeking an error, but an error was found, or you know something just wasn't computing. You know, like the numbers just weren't adding up the way that they should have added up, and so you had to go back and relook at all of those things, and maybe you've worked through those things, and now it's time to take everything that you've learned and start moving forward. Now, there's a relationship between Jupiter and Mercury that's coming up just two days after the full moon on Sunday, Mercury is actually going to change signs. When it went retrograde, it was in Libra, and then it went back to Virgo, and then it went direct in Virgo on October the 2nd, and it's going to come back into Libra because it went back to Virgo, and now it's going forward into Libra. When it changes signs on the, uh, the 11th, 
Tuesday the 11th, it will be in Libra and Jupiter will be across in Aries. So we have Jupiter moving through Aries and Mercury is going to be entering Libra and they're going to be in the same degree right away. And it'll be a fast moving relationship between these two planets because Mercury is moving pretty fast now and it's going to be in the opposite place and then move right along. But I want to mention this to you because on that day, Tuesday, and, you know, maybe the day before the day after a couple of days after when it's in Libra, you may feel this huge download of ideas or just be full of ideas, really busy mentally. And it's not just because of the Jupiter Mercury thing. There's one other thing that's going on that's going to really make this time period a very mental time period. And that is there's a few planets in air signs and and there's a planet in all three of the air signs. So we already know the sun's in Libra and Venus is also in Libra. Then we have Saturn in Aquarius and we have Mars in Gemini and they're all within close enough degrees to be a pretty potent and active energy. Now this is definitely active at the full moon. So in the, it's active now as we're going into the full moon and I'm recording this just a couple of days before the full moon. So I'd say it's active now. It's just this energy of, of being social, having ideas, being very creative, maybe more talkative, people who you know, you may get more phone calls or more invitations to go out socially. You know, Libra is a very social sign. The sun is in Libra. We're in Libra season. So that's going on as well. Then we have this very active full moon. It's fiery and it's airy. And then two days after that, we have the thing with Jupiter and Mercury. So we're just going into this really interesting, social, creative, communicative time And it's going to really, I think, be a more mental period of time. And especially if you are an air sign or a fire sign, because then you're going to be activated by all the activity in air and fire. There's great things that can come from air signs, the the social and the creative and the mental stimulation. There's also a nervousness that can come with this and an overthinking quality. And so I want to call that to your attention because you may find that you're overthinking or even overwhelmed by the amount of ideas that are coming up for you. It's exciting. And at the same time, it can be overwhelming and can be like, oh my gosh, do I just need to walk around with a tape recorder, you know, or on your phone uh, (laughs) or a piece of paper and a pen, just like there's so many ideas, I can't capture them all. So that can be cool, but it can also be like, you know, just like, diffuse, like, oh, I want to do this. Oh, but I want to do that. Oh, and I want to do that too. And I want to do that. And all of a sudden you have so many things that you want to do. You're like, I don't even know where to start. It's a almost a nervous kind of energy. It's a electric kind of energy. Air signs and the fire signs are very active signs. The water and earth signs tend to be more receptive and, you know, not to say one is better than the other. They have different qualities. So knowing that we're going into this really active full moon, and there's a lot of air sign activity we have you know, Saturn, Mars, Venus, and shortly after the full moon, Mercury, and air and fire signs, the moon and the sun, you know, that's, this, that's a lot. For many of you, it can be very welcome. It can be exciting, thrilling, creative, creative problem solving, coming up with brilliant ideas for whatever it is you're working on. It can be particularly social. You can have a lot of fun with your partner, your friends, your family, your kids, and it can leave you a little frazzled and a a little overwhelmed, maybe overthinking and just overly mentally stimulated. So I highly recommend that you do some things to help ground yourself. That would be like any kind of movement, you know, whatever makes sense for your individual lifestyle, whether it's running, yoga, martial arts, hiking, swimming, whatever works for you. Just moving will help regulate your system, will help regulate your nervous system. So I would definitely recommend that you plan for some extra time in your schedule to get some movement in. Now, if you already do that, you already work out, you already are on a routine, 
keep your routine. Um, try to be sure that those aren't the things that you push off of your schedule because of all the social and busy activity that may come your way. You don't want to let that go because it's going to help ground you and it's going to help you organize all of the thoughts and the stimulation that can come through this time period. Now, there is one other planetary configuration that's important to talk about, and that is between Saturn and Uranus. So this picked up a few weeks to a month ago. They are both slower moving planets, so they've never really gotten too far away from each other. And they're in a relationship called a square. So it's like a 90 degree angle. And these two planets cause some tension and that's growth oriented tension because oftentimes change doesn't happen without some tension, right? That tension that I'm talking about and that configuration or relationship between Uranus and Saturn was predominant in 2021. It was the main astrological event of 2021, the signs. So Saturn is in Aquarius and Uranus is in Taurus. And what happens is the retrograde motion of these planets makes it so they, they cross over the same degree at the same time, making this relationship very potent. And then they go a little bit away from each other and then there's retrograde and it brings it back and then it goes away. So that happened in 2021. And what's happening now is that because of retrograde, they're, they're in the same degree again. And so it's like remnants maybe of 2021, maybe coming back for you. If there was a big theme that happened for you in 2021, this is a time where you may be wrapping up whatever that was, because this is like the last dance between these two planets. They're going to just keep moving farther and farther away from each other. And it, it, if you're an astrologer, then you know that they are in the same degree, but they're not getting to the same minute. So they're getting really close, but they're not actually meeting in that exact point. It's still pretty potent though. I don't want to make it sound like it's not potent because they're not meeting exactly in the same degree and minute, but, but they are not actually getting to the same exact point like 2021, but it's close enough to take note because it's the last meeting, the last dance, as you could say. I think it could indicate that personally in your life, the theme of 2021 may be resolving. It may be that you're getting to what the end of that change is going to look like instead of being maybe in the middle of it. And not everyone is affected by this particular configuration. It really depends on your chart. In the world, we definitely see it. In the news, we definitely see it. And it's this tension between reform and innovation and making change and the status quo and, and sticking to the traditional old ways of doing things. And I think probably politics may be the best way to understand that and looking at what's been happening in the world in 2021 and um, how there may be some remnants of that coming back right now, especially as we're going into election season in the United States. There was just some elections in the uh, UK and you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. So it's definitely happening out there. And you may not personally feel like you've had any kind of major tension and uh, event from 2021 that's resolving, but it's definitely around you. And, and, and anyone who is in, living in this period of time is experiencing it in some way, whether it's directly or not directly. So that's happening at the time of this full moon. And then it's going to start... Um, fading away. Saturn is retrograde. It's going to go direct later in October. And then it's just going to keep going further and further away from Uranus. And they're not going to get this close again for a very long time. So just wanted to mention that to you. So you know that there is that tension. The air trine that I talked about earlier between Mars and Saturn and the sun and Venus, it's a trine. It's a different kind of relationship still a relationship, but it's a more smooth relationship. It's like there's just no obstacles. Things just tend to flow between these planets. So you have Mars, which is like energy drive, how you get things done, taking action. Saturn is about structure and discipline. And then you have the sun in Libra and Venus in Libra. And Venus is, is a, or I should say Libra is one of the signs of Venus. So it's a very happy position for Venus to be in, so she can really do all of her relating relationship type of things in her own Venusian way. 
And the same with Saturn. Aquarius is a Saturn sign. So it's a, it's a really co complementary placement. And then Mars is in Gemini. It's not one of its signs. It's, um, it's kind of a neutral sign for, for Mars. So they're all operating in a pretty good way, you could say that, you know, they're all in, in places that are going to support a lot of mental stimulation, a lot of idea making, getting things done. There's a lot of energy behind that, like actually physically getting something done, not just thinking of it, not just creating it, but actually executing it. And with that Jupiter and Mercury thing happening just two days after the full moon, it's really going to light that up. You know, and I say that as a pun intended with the full moon lighting up the the night, lighting up the sky, and then Jupiter and, and Mercury just really expanding your mind. And you know, the, really the the thing to watch out for is that nervousness. There's just a lot of energy, a lot of mental energy, and a lot of stimulation. So if you find yourself feeling nervous, fidgety, not able to sleep, just overthinking things, ground yourself. The best way to ground yourself is movement and then essential oils. I use essential oils. You know, there's probably an, an infinite list of ways that people can say that they ground themselves. These are my two favorite for you for this full moon. So with essential oils, uh, I've chosen some oils that help with focus and grounding and also can help with the creativity and the organizing. So when you have all all these potential um, energetics for idea making, it's really nice if you are grounded and can organize them, right? So then you're like, okay, how am I going to make this happen? So I have these great, brilliant ideas. How am I going to go about implementing them? So that's what I focused on when I was choosing the oils. And yes, I have them happening right now in my diffuser, which I'm sorry, you can't see. I moved my computer, but it is right here. And I'm breathing in these oils right now. And I have to say that they do blend really nice together. A couple of them were similar to or say the same oils that I mentioned the last video in the Libra New Moon, frankincense and cedarwood. So they're just really great grounding oils that also can help open your mind. I have vetiver, which is regenerating and reassuring, and it can definitely be one of the oils that I would choose for nerves, you know, just kind of helping to soothe your nervous system. And then the other one is Lang Lang. It's calming, it's soothing, and it's uplifting. So if you wanted to diffuse these oils together, like I'm doing right now, it smells really good. It's a really wonderful scent. It's got kind of woody and um, musky, you could say, romantic also. I mean, it's a Libra sun, Venus and Libra. So, you know, remember the romance. Romance is important. So I just put three drops of each in my diffuser. I know that frankincense can be somewhat expensive. So, you know, if you just want to use one drop, that's totally fine. And if you don't have all those oils, use the ones that you have. What I have next for you are some inspirational quotes for the Aries full moon. Now, the first one has to do with using your words. I didn't talk about this yet, but it's really important. With an Aries moon, or when Aries is involved, there's this impatience or, or rashness to the sign. It's very like childlike, it's youthful, it's playful. It's, it's just kind of going with your inner child, like doing what you feel in the moment, right? Like kids, if you watch kids play, they play with wild abandonment and adults, we don't do that, right? We filter ourselves. We, or we, some of us do, <laughs> some people don't. And if you're an Aries, then you know what I mean? Like you may have to try harder to think about what you want to say before you say it, because it, what you're thinking can just come out and honesty is good. And Aries and their honesty is, is, you know, we, we know that that's, um, one of the things that Aries can be, they're just honest because they, they blurt out what they think. It can also be hurtful if you, if you don't think about how to say what you want to say, sometimes you can say something that's really hurtful. And even though you can apologize or say, oh, I, you know, I meant to say it this way, or I didn't mean it that way. Uh, you know, it, the words have been said, you can't unsay them. So this is a period of time to really think about what you say before you say it. And with all that air stuff going on, it's going to be even more likely that the, that words are going to come out and maybe you wish you would have said them differently. So that leads me to my first quote. 
And ironically, my first two quotes, uh, they were unknown. So I don't know who said this. Uh, I tried to find out, but I don't know. So the quote goes like this. The tongue has no bones, but is strong enough to break a heart. So be careful with your words. And the second one, also unknown, it goes like this. Words are free. It's how you use them that may cost you. So just a really important note to think about as we go into this full moon to really watch how you say what, what needs to be said. And I'm definitely not saying to refrain from saying something that needs to be said. What I'm recommending is that you think about how your words may affect whoever you're speaking to. And what do you really want to happen as a result of what you say? Because sometimes you get the opposite effect. If you say something really harshly, the other person is not all that inclined to listen to you or work with you. So do think about how you use your words over the this whole weekend and all of next week. You know, you really want to think about that. Now, the rest of these have more to do with art and creativity because Aries is a very creative sign. And I think this is a great time to express yourself. I mean, Aries is about self-expression. So the first one is from Pablo Picasso. And he says, art is chaos taking shape. And that, that relates to what we were discussing about having a lot of stimulation, mental stimulation, maybe too many ideas. It can, you know, at times be overwhelming or overstimulating and cause some overthinking. And that is so art-like, right? It's like taking all of that and then shaping it into something creative. The next one is from Chris Jami or Jamie, J-A-M-I. I'm not sure how, how that's um, spoken. And the quote goes like this, create with the heart, build with the mind. So it's going to be such a creative and passionate full moon. I love, love that one. And then the last one is from Dorothy Parker. And she says, creativity is a wild mind and a disciplined eye. So I'm getting, what I'm getting at with these quotes, these last three, is the idea of organizing your creativity, which doesn't even sound like very artistic, right? But when we have so much opportunity to gain so much information from the energy of the time, it can sometimes just be super unorganized. And, and so it's like grounding yourself, you know, using the oils, using movement to help ground your body allows you to assimilate everything that's coming in, in a better, more organized manner. And that, that is what I hope you are able to do under this full moon. I have some ideas for you of what to do on the full moon this weekend, and then some other things to do maybe over the two weeks until we get to the next new moon. I know not everyone has the time to do whatever it is you want to do for the full moon right on the full moon. So I cover both. On the full moon this weekend, Sunday, and you, you can do this anytime over the weekend, whatever's convenient for you, because really the energy is culminating and it will really be apparent over the weekend that the moon is, it's going to look full. It's a fire element. So light your candles, light your fireplace, light your grill, anything that's fire related, you would want to incorporate that element into any ritual that you do. And I do have a full moon ritual resource that's free on my website, and I will include a link to that. So if you're interested in getting some ideas on what to do, please check that out. Aries is about creativity. So do something creative, however you define creativity. If you're an artist, do your art. If you're a speaker, maybe you want to practice some of your presentations. And, you know, if you're uh, uh, someone who does ceramics, you know, do something like that. You know, we all have creativity somehow, some way in our life. And looking at where Aries is in your astrology chart will give you some indication and some information about how creative you are, as well as the part of the chart that speaks to creativity. There's actually a part of a chart that's all about that. I think journaling is always a good thing to do. And if you are a person who likes to journal, I would recommend journaling about where you find your personal freedom, your personal creativity, and your personal individuality. Aries is very much a sign that loves its independence and its freedom. So this would be something for you to ponder. Do something that really lets that inner child out. If you have children, go play with your children and, you know, just be fun and carefree and a little bit wild. That, that would be a great thing to do on the full moon.
as we move into the week next week and we, we move away from the full moon, we'll still be in the cycle of this particular moon phase. And so for the couple of weeks between the full moon and the new moon, there are some ideas I have for you to of what you can do. Kind of going along with the idea of letting your inner child out and going out and playing, make a play date with your friends. Now, I know, I know you're not a child and I definitely don't mean that in any kind of condescending manner. I What I do mean is that sometimes we forget as adults to really tap into that playful side of ourselves, that inner child, the part of us that just wants to have wild, abandoned fun. I would say try to make some time with your friends to go out and do something that's just fun, whether it's, I don't know, roller skating or uh, going to the beach and playing and building a sandcastle or go to one of those escape rooms, you know, the puzzle rooms that they have in cities these days where you go into a room and you have to solve all these these puzzles in order to get out, like fun stuff like that. Play putt putt golf. Go drive a golf, uh, uh, not a golf cart, uh, a go kart. You know those theme parks that have that kind of stuff. Or go to a bigger theme park. Go to Disneyland. Go to Six Flags. You know things like that would be a really fun thing to do over the next couple of weeks. Aries loves a challenge, so challenge yourself. If there's something that you've been trying to work out and have haven't had much luck, get back at it right at the full moon. That is a great time to, to face a challenge. And then the last thing that I would say, and th this is going to relate to coming out of the Mercury retrograde and then using this Aries full moon energy is to evaluate what Mercury retrograde brought up for you. What things had to get realigned, reviewed? What, what did you reflect on? What became known to you that needed to have some, you know, repair or change. Um, just, I would reflect back and then take this period of time to move it forward because in Mercury retrograde, we talk about slowing down, paying attention, kind of digging in and figuring out those things and reflecting back. Now we're going direct. Now it's time to move forward. And you have all this mental energy, the mental boost of the air trine. We have the Aries full moon. We have a lot of energy to support uh, doing something about whatever came up for that Mercury retrograde. If it's related to business, whether it's your own business or your job or some project that needs organization around it to take this time and actually work on what moving forward is going to look like. Get your forward moving plan together. And it's also a time where you might want to write a business plan, a marketing plan, or if you already have one, you might want to do the next phase of it because marketing plans and business plans are always works in process, right? They never really end. They, you know, you can write it and it's done, but at some point you have to relook at it and adapt it for the evolution of whatever it's about. So those are things that you can do at this full moon. Full moons are about bringing things to culmination. So you might bring a project to culmination after you've learned a bunch about that project in the Mercury retrograde or bring a phase of a project to culmination. So then think about how you're culminating things under this Aries full moon. Okay, that's all I have for you for this time. I'll be back with you for the next new moon. And that's going to come up on Tuesday, October 25th. That'll be a new moon in Scorpio. And it'll be an important one because it'll be a solar eclipse. So we'll talk about what that's going to mean with that solar eclipse new moon. So I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.